Did you know that Keyshot is actually 3D printing software? Today, I'm going to be using SolidWorks in conjunction with Keyshot to add detailed maps to our 3D printed models so that we can add a ton of texture without a whole ton of effort. Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. My name is Jake Wenzel, and today we're going to be talking about using displacement maps in Keyshot to add textures to our 3D printed models. Before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell to stay up to date on the latest videos that we post to our channel. So here I've got my SOLIDWORKS model. This is a electric charging plug that I would like to add some texture to before I send it to print for my initial prototype. There's two areas that I think I'd like to texture. One going to be right under here. I want to add like a nice little rubber texture there, just like a ribbed, gripped rubber. And then up here, I want to add a texture of our logo, but kind of small and repeated and just like a nice little geometric kind of detail. Before I send this over to Keyshot, there's one kind of pre-processing step that I want to do, and that is to go through and select the surfaces that I want to split out. So I'm going to go around and select like this collar area. I think the best way to do it is probably just to start with these fillets here. And now I can add an appearance to that face, and it doesn't matter what appearance I give it. It just needs to be something that's separate from the default. And then same thing down here. This is just a single face, so I'm just going to click on that and give it a different appearance. That's our part, totally prepared. I'm going to save this out, and then we'll hop over to Keyshot. In Keyshot, we're going to go ahead and import our file. And remember, because we're working with Keyshot, we can just grab this .solid part file directly. No conversions necessary. We're just going to be able to import it directly in, which is really cool. So when we get our import screen, there's a bunch of different options here. And since we're only interested in displacing this geometry, and we don't actually want to like render it out and create an image and everything, the only thing we really need to worry about is this tessellation quality. So this is the amount of triangles that we're going to use. This, it's kind of an arbitrary number, but it relates to the amount of triangles that the end model is going to have. So if you set this higher, it's going to be more triangles. If you set it lower, it's going to be less triangles. Maybe I'll back it off just a little bit and then I'll hit import. And I'll show you in a sec what that did. So here's our part. You can see we have our different surface textures on there. But if I hop into my geometry view, you'll see now our entire model is made out of these triangles, which is exactly what we want. Since Keyshot is a rendering program, it needs to have these triangles in order for its ray tracing algorithms to kind of figure out what the image is going to look like. Um, but we also need these triangles for our displacement. And you'll actually see we're going to increase the number of triangles that we have when we go and displace these surfaces. Because even though we have a lot of them right now, it's still not enough for the resolution we want to achieve with our displacement. So I'm going to click on this guy and look at my materials. And you can see I have three separate materials down here. So these two colored ones, obviously, are the ones I want to displace. And this one is going to be remaining on its own. Edit Material to select it. And then we'll go to Edit Material Graph so that we can set up the displacement. This material graph gets into kind of the complexities of Keyshot and everything. But basically, what you need to know is that this is our output node, and it gets powered by everything to the left of it. Anything that's going into this surface socket on here, we're not going to be able to 3D print that. So we don't necessarily care about anything going into that surface socket. We're more worried about this geometry socket. So we're going to use that to displace our geometry, and that's going to be what we're going to be able to take back out and send to our 3D printer. So I'm going to add in a new node, our displacement node under geometry. And then one more, I'm going to add our texture. There's our texture map. I'll put that right there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and connect all these up. So our texture map is going to power our displacement, and then our displacement is going to change our geometry. So we'll hop into our texture map and load up my texture. The next step that we have to do here is get this 2D texture onto our 3D surface, which is a little bit difficult because 
it's really hard to kind of like wrap a piece of paper onto a ball. That's a really good way of imagining what we're trying to do here. You're going to end up with creases or you're going to have to like stretch the paper or something and it can become really difficult. So there's a bunch of different methods of doing this and we call them mapping. We need to map this texture to this 3D surface. So right now, if I hit C on the keyboard, we've got our texture popping up. So this is how it is currently being applied. If I hit move texture, you'll see that there's this box around our model. And this is one method of mapping a texture onto uh, our 3D part. And you can kind of imagine that if I had this texture applied to like this front face of the cube and then it got projected in towards the part, this is the kind of texture that you would see on that front face of the cube. If I zoom in here, you can see we have a little bit of a seam here. And that's from where these two cubic faces meet together. So right here we have a seam. That gets projected in towards the center of our part. And it hits our model right there. And that's where that seam ends up. For this texture, I just like some horizontal bars going straight across. So I'm going to change my projection type to something else. Because I don't need to wrap all the way around the part. So we'll go and change this to planar. Planar, move texture, and I want this straight on. So I'm going to take this, right click, and hold shift. And there we go. That should be about 90 degrees. Oop, not quite. There you go. And now that I'm done, I'll hit the check. And that looks like the orientation that I want. But our scale is a little bit off. So if we go down from our mapping, We've got our scale options down here. So we've got width and depth, and then we also have our angle here. So consider if this was turned 90 degrees from what, we, what I wanted to. I could rotate that plane, but I could also just type in 90 here, and it's going to rotate the texture. Let's play with this width and depth, or the width and the height here. And we'll bring this down. Maybe to like right there. That looks like, you know, some nice uh, molded rubber grip on there. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now that I'm happy with how my texture is positioned on my 3D model, I'm going to hit C again to stop my preview. And then I need to come over to my displace node. And this will actually control how everything gets displaced on the geometry. So how far, where is it going to start from, things like that. If we look down these settings, each of these, are they're kind of self-explanatory, but I'll go in and uh, clarify things. So first off, displacement height is basically the total height that our mesh is going to be displaced. So from zero displacement to maximum displacement, that's going to be 100 millimeters up from that zero point. 100 millimeters is a lot, so I'm going to crank this down. Let's go to 0.4 millimeters. The offset here basically determines where that zero point is going to be. So is that zero point going to be at the origin of the mesh, wherever it started, or is it going to be offset in a certain direction? Once I apply these changes, you'll see what I'm talking about. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. If I zoom in here so I can see what we're doing, we're not going to see any changes to our geometry until we hit the Geometry Nodes button here. And now you can see that we're actually displacing the triangles that make up that surface. If I spin this around and take a look at where these triangles are getting displaced, you can see our black is our zero point and our white is our high point. So white is maximum displacement, black is minimum displacement. And then this distance here from the top back down to the bottom is our 0.4 millimeter height. So that's our displacement height. Now, if I wanted to center this so that our zero point, instead of being all the way at the bottom here, was in the middle of this curve, about halfway between the top and the bottom, I could make my offset 0.2 millimeters. I'll hit Enter, and then Geometry Modes to commit our changes. And you can see this thing just sunk in by 0.2 millimeters. So we're now halfway sunk in. Quick correction with regards to the offset setting here. I'm talking about it in terms of millimeters, and that's not quite how that value works. So when you select a value for the offset, you're going to be using a percentage of the displacement height. So if you want that displacement to be 100% down into the part, you're going to set that setting to 1. If you want it to be about halfway, like I'm talking about here, you want it to set that to 0.5. So it's always going to be a percentage of whatever your displacement height is. All right, back to it. Now let's talk about the quality of our surface here. 
So if I let this render out a little bit, you can see that we have some kind of like bumpiness here. And the reason for that is that we don't have enough triangles there. And one way that we can increase the number of triangles that we have is by going over to our triangle size slider. So if I change the triangle size to something smaller, like 0.2 millimeters, and then I hit our geometry nodes again, you can see the quality of this has increased. Let's go even a little bit smaller. Nice. So the last thing that's going to affect the number of triangles that you can have and the size of those triangles is going to be this max triangle slider right here. So this is just a plain number, and it controls how many triangles you can have in the millions. It's kind of like a safety, you know. No matter how small we make our triangles here, it's never going to go over this number, so it shouldn't totally crash our machine. Let's go ahead and check if that changed anything. Doesn't look like it did. I'm gonna leave it there, because I think that looks pretty good. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing for our yellow part here. Edit the material, edit the material graph, and then we're going to set up our geometry nodes. I'm back. Let's check this and I like the smaller size, so we're gonna go with it. So there's one last thing that I wanna fix here, and that's that this area is popping out while this area is the one that is at the zero height. So I wanna reverse that. We could play with the image and go into Photoshop and make the white areas black and the black areas white, do a whole inversion thing, um, but Keyshot's got your back. So we're just going to go into our material graph and we'll find our utilities and our color invert node. And we're just going to put that right there, make sure that these guys are all hooked up. U to U and U to U. And that's going to invert the color of our materials. You can see black on white. And if I go to our color invert node and do the same preview, boom, swapped around. So now when I recalculate these geometry nodes, everything should look exactly how I want it. There we go. And I would say that is pretty much perfect. It's exactly what I wanted to see. So now we have our part. The only thing left to do is export it and 3D print it. So I'm going to file, save my session, and then file, export to 3MF. And then we'll just drag and drop our file into GrabCAD. So once we get this file into GrabCAD, we're going to want to run a repair on this because if we go back into Keyshot, you can see that we have our mesh kind of separating wherever we have this displacement applied. So wherever that displacement transitions to an area without displacement, we're going to have issues if we were just like to straight up 3D print that. GrabCAD's got some really great mesh repair tools in it, so it's going to be able to handle this stuff no problem. So load it into GrabCAD, checking it, and all set. So next, model analysis, and then I'll hit repair all models. All right, there we go. So that is the repair completed. That did take a couple of minutes, but we are exporting a super high poly count model, so it's going to be pretty heavy. I'm pretty happy with this orientation. I'm going to go ahead and slice it and print, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, good morning. It's the next day, and I've got a freshly printed part straight off of our Stratasys F370 3D printer. Uh, we printed this in 0.7 layer height with ABS material, and I think it came out pretty well. So the ridge details look fantastic, in my opinion, where we have that rubber uh, textured handle. That looks just great. The overall surface finish of the ABS, also fantastic. The only thing I'm a little bit disappointed in are these little uh, Go Engineer logos that I put around the collar of this part here. I think I probably pushed the scale just a little bit too small on those. They needed a little bit more breathing room in order to really come into their own. But aside from that, I think the whole print turned out really successful and I'm pretty happy with it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And if you have a topic you'd like us to cover in the future, please leave a comment down below and we will take a look at that. Visit our website, goengineer.com for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. Bye for now.